Well, ladies and gents, they are at it yet again. And it only seems like yesterday that I made a similar video to this when we talked about event 201, which was a, a coronavirus event that took place in October, November of 2019. And then a month later, an actual coronavirus outbreak took place. We then afterwards had the uh, swine flu exercise and then a swine flu, what they call pandemic. Uh, I don't really know if it was a pandemic. It seemed like it was very isolated to certain uh, groups, uh, but we won't, we won't go there, then took place. But now they're talking about this new pandemic exercise that takes place in 2025 in Brazil. And I mean, you've got to see this stuff. It, it's, it's, it's worrying. And it's always the same names every time. Where there is smoke, there is often fire. Now, before I show you this video on catastrophic contagion, uh, which they have just released and is pretty disturbing. First, let me just give you some uh, context here. So I actually made a video on um, the event 201, which was back in, hold on, let's just get the date. So that was June 2020 one uh, when I was in San Jose, Costa Rica. And this video was very quickly banned. Uh, that's why I've titled it banned video because no one could actually watch it. But it was based on this event 201 here. So I've got to give you context before we go into um, this new video that we're going to talk about. And uh, <laughs> this is funny, Tom Inglesby, we'll see him again in a moment. But this isn't an isolated event when they do these pandemic exercises, which often come true. These happen regularly. So this was another one called Atlantic Storm. We had, oh, what have we been talking about? Dark winter. Yes, dark winter. This was another one. And one thing I'm not going to do today is look into the key players of each because then we do go down a new rabbit hole. We then had Clade X, a pandemic exercise. <laughs> so these are regular events that they hold. They're always fictional, okay? And they've got to emphasize that they are fictional because when they actually occur, people start asking questions. So this time they've done the catastrophic uh, uh, contagion event here, but they were very careful to put out a ton of media straight away just to make sure no one looks into this too deeply. So Reuters did this, fact check, catastrophic contagion video is fictional and does not support claims about pandemic preparedness exercises. And you know, there's this big ugh, story as usual they're doing here, uh, but I, I just highlighted a couple of points. Catastrophic contagion was an event conducted on October 23rd, 2022. So just a couple of months ago in Belgium by the John Hopkins Center for Health Security, the World Health Organization, the WHO, and oh gosh, here we go again, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So it gathered Bill Gates as well as 10 current and former health ministers and senior public health officials. So they all took part in a simulated WHO emergency health advisory board meeting set in 2025. So yeah, put this in your, your calendar, ladies and gents, to address a fictional infectious disease called severe epidemic enterovirus respiratory syndrome 2025. That is a mouthful, AKA Sears. Well, actually they could probably just lose the severe epidemic um, part of this. That's just fear mongering to scare people. So it is basically a respiratory um, virus or condition. And they go on to say, which becomes a pandemic with a higher fatality rate than COVID-19, which wouldn't be too difficult if you've actually seen the new um, updated death stats on COVID, which I'm guessing most people haven't because you just won't see this, the media won't show that, and disproportionately affects children and young people. Now, this is quite different from what happened with COVID, because if we look at you know just a couple of the stats here, so this is from New York City Health, COVID uh, in the younger people, zero to 17, number of deaths, nine, share of deaths 0.06% or share of deaths of unknown origin 0.02% here. So it is very different in terms of what they're talking about this time around uh, how it affects young people. They're saying it disproportionately affects young people. Now it always makes me laugh whenever we see, here let's get close, who is that right in the middle there where my mouse is hovering? Who is that? Yes, that is our friend. <laughs> 
Uh, obviously, I'm joking. Uh, Bill Gates, again, the John Hopkins Center for Health Security in partnership with the WHO and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation conducted this exercise on October uh, 23rd. So this is the official website that we are on here. So centerforhealthsecurity.org. And it always makes me laugh how they know that you know the public have their reservations about certain people. And these certain people, can you see where I'm hovering the mouse here, is always at these meetings. I mean, it must be the biggest and best PR campaign in the world that he is always around whenever something bad happens and yet they still call it conspiracy. Now, let me just play this video uh, for you here. Officials in two Latin American countries alerted the WHO of several outbreaks of a new infectious disease that's mysteriously appearing across the region, Severe Epidemic Enterovirus Respiratory Syndrome 2025. As of today, there have been an estimated 1 billion cases worldwide, with more than 20 million deaths, including nearly 15 million children. Countless millions are alive but left with paralysis or brain damage. The virus could cause a severe pandemic if early containment and mitigation efforts are not successful. At this stage, communication is key and communication should include not just scientists with data. Okay, so you notice that name there, Tom Inglesby. So I'm gonna have to show you this. So all of these people are actors, except I saw the name and I thought, I keep seeing that Tom Inglesby. So I did a quick search on the WEF website and look at all of these results. So he directed John Hopkins University Center for Health Security. Now, what's also interesting about this time around is that you don't see the WEF mentioned anywhere at all. And I mean nowhere at all on this. Now, they used to be mentioned all the time in these exercises, but now they're keeping the name out because of everything that's, that's going on and because the public is getting wise. But also social, religious and political leaders trust. Now, that's another interesting thing that they're talking about. So this, uh, in comparison to previous exercises, is very different in terms of what they're saying. So previously, they'd say things like there needs to be a a uh, WHO controlled response and, you know, things like this. This time around they're saying, oh, we need to bring in religious leaders and national leaders and all this. So they're basically saying all the right things so that the public doesn't get upset. But do they really mean these things? I don't think so. Just look at what happened over the last two or three years. You had uh, all the churches that were forced closed and temples and mosques and, you know, wherever you worship. But all of these things were just were just closed. So for them now to say, oh yeah, that won't ever happen again. Well, actually that's not true. I'm gonna show you another slide um, after this video. WHO needs to be a voice for the voiceless. The most successful countries are those which invested in preparedness and trained for this moment years in advance. If more countries had participated and heeded the guidance, the toll might have been much less. Okay. So there we go then. So a, a couple of points then. So they said um, a billion people affected, 20 million deaths. Well, 20 million into a billion is um, one, in, one in 50. So we're talking about a 2% death rate there. But I think the concerning thing is what they said after. So that was paralysis and brain damage. And it, it's interesting because I'm, I'm trying to link that. I'm not a medical guy. So I'm trying to link that with how a, a respiratory infection can somehow, or a respiratory virus can somehow cause brain damage and paralysis. So if you are a medical person, please drop that in the comments because I, I mean, that, that baffles me. But it's similar to what we're seeing at the moment. So, you know, they said, oh, after COVID, you'd have long COVID and all this. But it's interesting because we're now seeing, uh, I saw a report, I think it was from the Office of National Statistics the other day, and it was talking about the, the one of the biggest deaths now is unknown. So that's what gets I guess, put on a, a death certificate, unknown. Um, it seems a bit strange to me. And then you have SADS, sudden adult death syndrome, or we have, you know, an increase in heart attacks and strokes and all these other things, which of course are being put down to long COVID. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll leave you to uh, think through that logically and, uh, and rationally. But you notice the other thing she said towards the end there was that, 
you know, we need this sort of more centralized um, approach. And if more governments had, had gone on board sooner, then, um, you know, we'd have less deaths and things like that. Well, the biggest problem is that the public have lost trust in the WHO and some of these other organizations because they use manipulation, they use me media, they use pressure tactics, they use some really manipulative tactics to get everybody, and again, I just showed you the statistics there, even children to take vaccines who probably, in fact, I'll say definitely, didn't need them unless they had some sort of you know, severe underlying health condition. I mean, the statistics speak for themselves here. This isn't me saying it, I'm, I'm just reading what the statistics show across all these different countries. Now, the other thing that we've got is, well, we've got these recommendations here, but I'll speak about the recommendations in a moment. So what we have, and this is from the WHO uh, 2008, is zones. So the WHO have created these zones, which are very similar to the United Nations zones, funny enough. So we have the uh, European region, which is this entire blue region. The Americas is this red region here, which covers South America, Central America, and Northern America. And then we have these are the yellow, dark green, light green, orange uh, regions here as well. But the recommendations are very, very interesting. So here, here's the uh, WHO actions. So they will provide leadership. Okay, so this is at a global level. So th they would be the sort of overriding people at the top. So they provide leadership. Who else would be involved? The United Nations, what a surprise. Bilateral development agencies, non-governmental organizations, and the private sector. And of course, now you know why there's so many exercises. But let me just say one thing on that. Exercises are quite normal. It's not as if this is, um, you know, quite unique and just a one-off thing and they're doing it and then there's an event just after. Uh, for those of you who have served in the military or, you know, police or fire or health services or, or whatever, you'll know that exercises are very normal. I used to, when I was a soldier in the army, I was doing exercises all the time. Every few months we would do bigger exercises, but we'd pretty much almost daily you're doing some sort of exercises or you might call it drills or something like that. So what I'm saying here is, uh, you know, exercises are normal for, um, you know, smaller level organizations right up to governmental organizations. But what isn't normal is when these exercises take place one month and then two months later, the actual thing happens. And this has happened quite a few times over the last 10 to 15 years. So that's why I'm very skeptical when I see new things like this about, oh, 2025, Brazil, there's gonna be this new pandemic. Yeah, I, I am a little bit skeptical. But then in terms of national action, so this would be your politicians, your leaders, um, well, what do they do? Well, they have to reference current WHO guidelines and establish as needed, this is worrying, full legal authority and legislation for all proposed interventions. And we saw just how badly this was done this time around, where we had these dystopian measures being enforced, or if there was a protest against certain things, uh, the protesters got closed down, got shut down, sometimes beaten. We had, say, the truckers convoy, their bank accounts closed down. We had other protesters put into prison. We had even, um, you know, very important people in the medical world discredited, lost their license to operate, just because they might have said something that slightly disagreed with the mainstream narrative. So, yeah, I do think it's worrying. Um, the way the, some of these exercises are going and what they're saying is going to happen next time around. Because as always, I, I think a lot of this stuff that is happening is really not about health and all these other things. And again, take it for each sector here. But I think a lot of it is, is about control. It is getting more control and putting more systemization into place ready for the future that we're moving into. And you only have to open your eyes to see that the future's getting closer and closer and closer, and we are going into somewhat of a negative spiral, negative cycle at the moment. And it, it always makes me laugh when people say, what, what, what are you seeing that I'm not? Um, uh, economic collapse on the way, or at least an economic crisis. We've had lockdowns and health issues. We've had more protests in the last year than we have in the last 10 years. 
we've got employees and different sectors on strike um, in such large numbers that we haven't seen since 2008. We're seeing conflict in Ukraine region, Russia and Ukraine. We're seeing conflict with uh, now different, uh, I mean, there's five or six different regions at the moment that are seeing new forms of military conflict. And that doesn't even include the dozen other countries that already have conflict, which you just don't hear about on the media. So ladies and gents, you know, what do I think about this current exercise? Do I agree with what, you know, a lot of the videos I've seen over the last few days and articles on this? Um, pretty much, I don't agree with either side that I'm seeing. I don't agree with the mainstream media side that, oh, these conspiracy theorists and, you know, they're trying to cause trouble. I don't agree with that. But at the same time, I don't agree with the other side that's saying, look, this is proof there's going to be another pandemic in 2025 and it's going to kill millions, you know, hundreds of millions of people and all this other stuff I'm seeing. I don't agree with that either. I think that they'd be pretty stupid after putting all of this out to do it again. You know, they've been caught out the last time doing it. They'd be, they'd be just absolutely crazy to actually start this in Brazil and have it happen exactly the way they've said. So do I think it's going to happen in 2025? No, I, I really don't. We might see some sort of event, but is it going to be what we've just seen on this video and what we've gone through here in the slides? No, I don't think so. But do I think there's going to be another event, another pandemic type thing coming down the line? Yeah, yeah, I do. And not just because these things happen regularly uh, throughout history, but because we have so much medical manipulation, I guess we can say now with all of these you know, labs around the world doing all of these experiments. And, you know, I mean, what about that, that lab that just created a COVID virus that was deadly? Like, to me, I'm thinking, why would you even create that? Why would, why would you create that? It doesn't make any sense. You know, just, they create it just because they, they could. I mean, this stuff is nuts. And that's why I'm very glad that I live quite isolated and quite self-sufficient. Let me, let me just say that. Uh, but thanks for watching today. I really appreciate you. Take care. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.